we have to stay in schedule, especially for example for ExoMars 2016 is the launch date and we, we still have some work in front of us. responsible for all the structural uh, systems as well as the propulsion systems of uh, the ExoMars vehicles and uh, at the moment we have uh, two missions there 2016 with uh, an orbiter vehicle as well as a lander vehicle which shall land uh, on Mars and uh, 2018 uh, at the moment also a rover mission where of course we don't have really propulsion but structural systems. ExoMars is uh, now a corporation also with NASA, so we also have international corporations with the US, where we try to uh, create combined missions which are in the end too big for each of the countries, for example. For the 2016 mission, uh, we have an uh, ESALET mission, which is uh, we are responsible for the orbiter, a science orbiter, so called trace gas orbiter. Um, which will uh, investigate the atmosphere of Mars for several years and then also be a relay satellite for uh, coming ground missions, future ground missions, for example like the 2018 uh, rover mission that is also planned between uh, ESA and NASA. We have an entry demonstrator, uh, a lander module, which uh, will enable us to uh, raise technology levels, readiness levels, uh, for example for uh, GNC propulsion and these kind of things, so that we can prove uh, we can successfully land something on Mars and we can uh, work uh, a payload down there. It's a mixture between uh, technological work, technical work and the programmatic work. So um, being directly in a project is uh, uh, a little bit different to what I did before when I was supporting projects from the side of the technical directorate, which was really concentrating on the technical side. Here I'm also involved in, let's say, setting up the project. Uh, developing the project uh, also from the agency side, uh, being involved in all the negotiations uh, of proposals of future phases of the project. Uh, so I'm responsible uh, not only from the technological side but also in the end in my area for schedule and to a further extent cost uh, because my management also asks me is this too much we are paying for, yes or no, and I should give an answer there. The crew is taught not to touch its uh, command panel anymore. Moving in slowly but surely as the ATV2 homes in. That's a good speed by the way. On the space, it's a good speed? Yeah. Actually it was the docking of ATV to the International Space Station because I was working on ATV before for several years in industry also supporting it here and there uh, on, from the agency side and uh, mainly working on propulsion and uh, when we docked uh, successfully to the International Space Station I really have to say this was very exciting to see all these pictures and so that it absolutely worked it was fantastic absolutely fantastic. The VIPs here, as well as the technicians, as you see, clapping and congratulating. And then, of course, uh, technological challenges. Uh, if you uh, develop something new, of course, things can uh, turn out. They don't work as you planned them to work. And then you have to find solutions. And uh, this is definitely a challenge. And uh, an interesting one because uh, you have to think about it, you have to work together with industry, with your colleagues and so on to find solutions. The way of working in each country is kind of different, which makes it also interesting because uh, one day I talk, let's say, uh, to Italian colleagues, also to Italian industry, uh, which is uh, one way of working. Then I talk to uh, the other day, for example, uh, to French colleagues and so on. So you always have to adjust a little bit and I have my own way of working uh, when I'm German so uh, you know they have to adjust to me, I have to adjust to them.
I would not work at ESA, I would miss a lot. A lot of really interesting challenges, uh, fun, and uh, probably one of the most exciting areas to work.